Huan, I'm Jing from University of Oklahoma. My study is about time sequence stratigraphy of the Woodbury with the microseismic uh, micro event pattern. Uh, for the case study, as you can see, that we have total 12 stages of microseismic event from the map view and east view. And we, uh, we do have the cutting from this horizontal well and a nearby vertical well. So we measure the handheld XRF by, XRF by this instrument. We get, this is the XRF profile for the vertical well uh, and the gamma ray and Young's modulus Poisson ratio. We build up a, a sequence stratigraphic model. This is a model for the sequence stratigraphy. Uh, and and we based on that we build up a brilliant ductile model. This is a hands model. Even uh, when we add in the Young's modulus and Poisson ratio, this is the XRF profile for the horizontal well. Um, I will come back for more detail when I when I explain the microseismic event. So uh, we upscale the microseismic event number and magnitude into our both model, and we can see this is how they distributed for each uh, each zone within the model. But the overall trend from the sequence stratigraphic, sequence stratigraphic model, we can see 58% uh, of the event and magnitude located within the high stand system track, and 48% of the event and magnitude located in the transgressive system track. And uh, even more obvious results showing the brittle and ductile model, we can see 67% of the event and magnitude located in the brittle zone, and 33% event in, uh, 33 of the event and magnitude in the ductile zone. From the observation of the microseismic event, we came up with three schematic, schematic diagram of the hydraulic fracture when the perforation zone located in the brittle zone, as we can see from this situation, the fracture not only grow vertically within the formation, also uh, when it hit the brittle zone, it just uh, um, grow horizontally along the, along the bed. But when we locate the perforation uh, zone at uh, at the very ductile bed, um, with as we can see, the number and magnitude is pretty constrained, and uh, not much event grow along the bed. For another one, if the if we locate the well within the ductile um, ductile zone and the perforation pressure is pretty high, we will penetrate through the whole woodfur and uh, grow the fracture within the upper Mississippi limestone and the lower sylvan shale. This is not an efficient one, also. And this is a map view for two of the stages of micro seismic event. One stage is showing uh, showing a very uh, a part and um, um, respond. We interpret it as its response to the Nimaha fault as showing a red line or the natural fracture grow along the fault strike direction. And another stage showing the asymmetrical by wind geometry and uh, uh, we just interpret it as the it's just a response of the uh, uh, pressure depletion zone at the fault uh, at the fault side. Uh, this is the east view from uh, from the well, shown uh, with the vanadium and molybdenum uh, profile um, projected on the well. As we can see from this horizontal profile, we get three pockets of uh, high vanadium and molybdenum pocket, which is anoxia index, uh, oxia prox anoxia proxies, and could be a high potential of the TOC, which is ductile. So we can see the micro seismic event go around those pockets, which is prove those uh, areas really ductile. Um, for conclusion of this study, we uh, we conclude that hydraulic fracturing job is better uh, is better efficiency when we tie it with the local sequence stratigraphy and uh, XR also XRI profile. And for the future drilling uh, suggestion, we suggest that to drill uh, perpendicular to the ho maximum horizontal stress direction, which is north seventy eight east direction, to get more high efficiency hydraulic fracturing. Thank you.